old Marley was as dead as a doornail. This must be distinctly understood, or nothing wonderful can come of this story I am going to relate. Seven years ago today. What's that you say? Mr. Marley died. Seven years ago this very day. Would it be too much to ask that you return to the work for which I pay you so handsomely? Mr. Cratchit! The fire's gone cold, Mr. Scrooge. Come over here, Mr. Cratchit. What is this? A shirt. And this? A waistcoat. And this. A coat. These are garments, Mr. Cratchit. Garments were invented by the human race's protection against the cold. Once purchased, they may be used indefinitely for the purpose for which they are intended. Cold burns. Cold is momentary, and cold is costly. There will be no more coal burnt in this office today. Is that quite clear, Mr. Cratchit? Yes, sir. Now, please get back to work before I am forced to conclude that your services are no longer required. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas, Bob Cratchit. And the same to you, Mr. Fred. Merry Christmas, Uncle. I said Merry Christmas, Uncle. Humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle. Surely you don't mean that. I do. What's Christmas? But a time for buying things for which you have no need, no money. Time for finding yourself a year older, not an hour richer. <laughs> if I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips <laughs> should be boiled in his own pudding <laughs> and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. <laughs> Come now, Uncle. Neville, you keep Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone, then. Much good it may do you, much good it has done you. There are a great many things from which I might have derived good, from which I have not profited, I dare say. Christmas among the rest. But I've always thought of Christmas time when it comes round as a good time, a kindly, forgiving, charitable time. A time when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut-up hearts freely to their fellow creatures. 
And so Uncle Bertie has never put a scrap of gold or silver into my pocket. I do believe that it has done me good. And I say, God bless it. Not a sound from you. And you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. You're quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Please don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us, Tora. Dine? <laughs> I'd see myself in hell for it. It would be a great joy to me. And to my wife. Yes, your wife. I'm told she brought very little to the marriage. A poor girl, I understand. I love her. And she loves me. Love. Good afternoon, nephew. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why can't we be friends? You are wasting my time. I'm sorry to find you so resolute. We've never had a quarrel, so far as I know. And so I shall keep my good humor. And I wish you a Merry Christmas. Goodbye. And a Happy New Year. How's that fine family of yours, Bob Cratchit? Well, sir, all very well. Good. You'll give them my best wishes? Yes, sir, I shall. Thank you for remembering them. Goodbye, Crash. Goodbye, sir. And a Merry Christmas. Idiot. And he's made me late to do so. I'm off to the exchange. Don't lock up a moment early. No, sir. Ah. want all day tomorrow, I suppose. If it's quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. If I were to hold back half a crown from your pay for it, you'd think yourself ill-used, I'll be bound. But you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. Christmas comes but once a year, sir. Poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. And I suppose you must have it. Be here all the earlier the next morning, Cratchit. Yes, sir, I shall. I certainly shall. Make sure. Yes, sir. And a Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Scrooge. Humbug! Ah! Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Don't beg on this corner, boy. I'm not begging, sir. I'm Tim. Tim Cratchit. I'm waiting for my father. <laughs> Tim Cratchit, huh? Well, then you'll have a long wait, won't you? Thank you, sir. Humbug. my corn, gentlemen. You must meet my quote. Plus 5% for the delay. That's outrageous, Scrooge. You'll be left with a warehouse stuffed with corn. Well, that's my affair, isn't it? But if we pay your price, our bread will be dearer. The poor will suffer. Buy the corn someplace else. Good day, sir. Scrooge, a moment. We'll take your corn at the price you quoted yesterday. Too late. If you wait until tomorrow, it'll cost you another 5%. Damn it, Scrooge, it's not fair. No, but it's business. I'll give you a moment to make up your mind. Oh, 
All right, Scrooge. Done and done. Very good, General. Now, make sure that a draft for the entire amount of this transaction is deposited with my clerk. I don't ship until I have the cash in hand. Good day. Uh, Mr. Scrooge, I presume. Indeed you do, sir. You don't know us. Nor do I wish to. My name is Poole, and this is Mr. Hackett. Excellent. Now, if you'll allow me to pass. Uh, let me explain, sir. At this festive season of the year, it seems desirable that those of us with means should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at this time. Provision? Are you seeking money from me then? Many thousands are in want of common necessaries. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comforts. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. The workhouses, they're still in operation? They are. I wish I could say they were not. The treadmill, the poor houses, still in full vigor? All very busy, sir. <laughs> I was afraid from what you said that something had stopped them in full force. A few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and food and warmth. Oh, what can we put you down for, sir? Nothing. You wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. Since you ask me what I wish, gentlemen, that is my answer. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. My taxes help to support the public institutions which I have mentioned, and they cost enough. Those who are badly off must go there. Many can't go there, and many would rather die. If they would rather die, perhaps they had better do so and uh, decrease the surplus population. Surely you don't mean that, sir. With all my heart. Now, if you will go about your business, gentlemen, and allow me to go about mine. Good day. to have the whole day off tomorrow. We'll be together, the whole family for the entire day. Hurrah for Christmas, the best day of the year. Each child will tell that in his heart and gold in all his days. His reason weak, his anguish of and sorrow all his pain. Sleep well, the church goes on singing. Look. They're having such fun, Father. You'll be there one day, playing with the other children. I'm quite sure I will. I feel I'm getting stronger every day. We must go home now. Your mother will be waiting for us. Yes, it's time to go home. My name.
I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Can you sit down? I can. We'll do it then. You don't believe in me. I don't. What evidence would you have of my reality beyond that of your own senses? I don't know. Why do you doubt your senses? Because a little thing affects them, a slight disorder of the stomach. <laughs> there might be a bit of bad beef, a blot of mustard, a fragment of an underdone potato. <laughs> There's more of gravy than of grave about you, whatever you are. Humbug, I tell you, humbug. <laughs> Dreadful apparition. Why do you trouble me? Man of the worldly mind, do you believe in me or not? I do. I must. But why do spirits walk the earth? Why do you come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and wide. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. It is doomed to wander through the world and witness what it cannot share, but might have shared, and turn to happiness. <laughs> Chain. Tell me why. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. Is its pattern strange to you? Or would you know the weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself? It was as full, as heavy, and as long as this seven Christmas Eves ago, you have labored on it since. It is a ponderous chain. I see no chain. Mine were invisible until the day of my death. As yours shall be. Jacob. Tell me more. Speak. Comfort to me. I have none to give. My spirit never walked beyond our counting house. In life, my spirit never roved beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hole. No doubt of that. You, you always were a good man of business. Business? Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. I'm sorry for you, Jacob. Is there anything I can do for you? For me? Nay, it is too late. But I have come for your sake, Ebenezer. Have you? Well, you always were a good friend. As part of my penance, I have been sent to warn you. And so you have. And to offer you a hope and chance of escaping my fate, you will be haunted by three spirits. Three spirits? Is that the chance and hope you mentioned? It is. Well, in that case, I, I think I'd rather not. Expect the first tonight 
when the bell tolls one. Couldn't they all come at the same time, Jacob, and have it over? Expect the second on the stroke of two. The third, more mercurial, shall appear in his own good time. Look to me no more. Look that you may remember what has passed between us. Just a dream. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Perhaps you would do me the favor of placing upon your head that uh, cap that you hold in your hand. I bring the light of truth. Would you use this cap to put it out? I beg your pardon. I had no intention of offending. What business brings you here? It is for your welfare that I appear. I can think of no greater welfare than a night of uninterrupted sleep. Be careful, Ebenezer Scrooge. I speak of your reclamation. Well, if it's reclamation, then let's get on with it. Come. We shall be invisible and silent as the grave. You will now see a child, a youth. You will see yourself, Ebenezer. The air is so clean, how different from the city. Do you know where you are? <laughs> of course, I, I was bred here. I was a boy in this place. That's Daniel Costas. <laughs> Robert Estes. Hello, Daniel. The big one there, that's David. Tyler, David! Look here, it's Ebenezer. I told you, Ebenezer, they can't hear you. How happy they all seem. That's right, they do. Yes, well, it's time to move on. Come along, Ebenezer. 
You know the way. I could walk it blindfolded. Your school. I remember. And it's Christmas Day. There's a boy in there, neglected. The boy is deserted by his friends and his family. His mother is dead. His father holds him a grudge. Why does his father hold him a grudge? She died in childbirth. His birth. Weep for the boy if the tears will come. He has his friends, even on this day. From his beloved books. His Alibaba. <laughs> Dear old honest Alibaba. And the Sultan's groom turned upside down with a genie. But not a real child to talk to. Not a living person. Robinson Crusoe, not real. <laughs> and Friday, and the parrot with green body and yellow tail, not real. He may do this boy. Let us see another Christmas day. When you were a youth. Fan. Fan! Dear, dear brother! <laughs> I've come to bring you home, dear brother. To bring you home. Home! Home, little fan. Yes. Home for good and all. Father's much kinder than he used to be. He spoke to me so gently one day and night that I was not afraid to ask once more if you might come home. And he said, yes, you should. And sent me in a coach to bring you. You're quite a woman, little fan. And you. You are to be a man now. And never come back here. Come along, we mustn't keep father waiting. Father! There, boy, there. Stand still now. I mean, look at you. They haven't been overfeeding you, that's certain. I've, I've grown, I think. Yes, most boys do. Fan has told you you won't be moving back here. Yes, sir. It's time you made your way in the world. I've arranged an apprenticeship for you. You'll move into Mr. Fezziwig's establishment in three days' time. Three days, Father? I'd hoped we'd have my brother home for longer. Longer? Three days is quite long enough for both of us. Don't you think, Ebenezer? Yes, sir. Quite long enough. You finished back there? All safe and secure, sir. The carriage firm. On our way. Into the carriage, boy. Fan pleaded for more time, but my father was very stern man. Fan. She died a young woman. She had such a generous nature. Yes, too young. Old enough to bear a child. No, one son. Fred, your nephew. And Fred Hollowell, yes. Who bears a strong resemblance to your sister. Does he? I never noticed. You never noticed? I'm beginning to think you've gone through life with your eyes closed. Open them. Open them wide. You know this man. It's old Fezziwig. Hmm? Oh, yes, my dear. Would you ask uh, Mr. Pulling to refer that matter to Mr. Scrooge? Eh? Uh, thank you, my dear. And you know this place. No, it was I not apprenticed here. Yeah. <laughs> Pay attention, everybody. Dick, Ebenezer, pens down. No more work tonight, boys. It is Christmas Eve. Uh, so, close those ledgers down, Ebenezer and Dick. Clear away in here, everybody. We need the room. Here we go, lad. 
You'll enjoy yourself tonight, Master Ebenezer. That is an order. Yes, sir, I'll try. You won't put your heart in it. You put enough of yourself into your work, and I have nothing but praise for the way you've discharged your duties. But you're young, eh? There's more to life than uh, bolts of cloth and musty old ledgers, eh? It's Mrs. Fezziwick and the three daughters and their suitors. Happy Christmas to you all. Bell. I've forgotten how beautiful she was. Hello, Belle. Hello. Would you like to dance? Yes. you danced, Ebenezer? Waste of time, dancing. You didn't think so then? There was a reason then. There's been a change in you since you'll come to Fezziwig's. You were so gloomy. Oh, I think I should warn you, Miss Bell. I am of a serious bent of mind. I consider seriousness to be an admirable trait of character, but it can be overdone. I should take heed of your advice, ma'am. And go through life with a grin on my face. Come along, you two. They're striking up Sir Roger de Coverley. Time enough to sample the punch when you're old and fat like me, eh? I'd best partner my wife before that young scamp goes dancing off with her. Oh. <laughs> what a difference it makes, Ebenezer, to travel the rough road of life with the right female to help bear the burden, eh? <laughs> what a lucky man I am! Shall we join the others, Ebenezer? My pleasure, Miss Bell. <laughs> Old Fezziwig, a silly man. Silly? Why, why silly? What did he do, after all, to deserve the praises of those apprentices? Spent a few pounds, danced like a monkey, beamed a great smile. Well, the happiness he gave, I gave was quite as great as though it had cost a thousand pounds. Just small things. Are you in love, Ebenezer? Hmm. The thought had occurred to me. She's too good for you. One day, when I've made my fortune, then I'll deserve her. It was a night never to be forgotten. Never. But you did forget, often. No? Look, another Christmas Eve. Delayed by the pressure of business. Do you remember? No. Hello, Belle. Now do you remember? I'm sorry I'm late. I thought you might not come. I know how busy you are. Well... <laughs> the time of year and the nature of my business it's important now that I use my time and opportunities wisely. Another idol has displaced me. <laughs> what idol has displaced you? A golden one. All your hopes have merged into a master passion. Profit. The thought of money engrosses you. Perhaps I've become wiser. <laughs> but 
But I've not changed towards you. Our contract is an old one. It was made when we were young and our prospects limited. How often I've thought of those times. If there had been no understanding between us, would you seek me out and try to win me now? A dowerless girl with nothing but myself to bring to a marriage. You have no answer. You think I would not then? Oh, Ebenezer, what a safe and terrible answer. So characteristic of the careful man. Ebenezer, I release you. You are a free man. I let you go with a full heart. May you be happy in the life you have chosen. I almost went after her. Almost carries no weight, especially in matters of the heart. And you did have a heart, didn't you, Ebenezer? Why didn't you follow her? Upon his death, my father left me a small inheritance. Belle wished to be married, insisting that we could get along on very little. But I wanted something more for both of us. So I lent out that money, laid the foundations for financial success, which I have achieved, I may add. Hmm. Congratulations. Well, thank you not to sneer. Spirit, show me no more. Conduct me home. You have explained what you gained. Now I will show you what you have lost. Belle. Yes. Belle. And those are her children. Oh, darling, he's wonderful. Isn't he? <laughs> Lord, what a brood. You'll have to wait until tonight. All of you. Presents on Christmas Eve, as usual. Fancy. They might have been mine. The same thought occurred to me. I saw an old friend of yours in the city this afternoon. Who was it? Guess. I can't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window and it was not shuttered. He had a single candle lit upon his desk. His partner, Jacob Marley, lies on the point of death, I hear. And there he sat, Ebenezer Scrooge, alone. Quite alone in the world, I do believe. Poor Ebenezer. Poor wretched man. Spare me your pity. I have no need of it. They can't hear you. And as for you... I've had enough of your pictures from the past. Leave me! Haunt me no longer! Truth lives. Truth lives. Truth lives. Truth
Well, Jacob Marley, where is this spirit of which you spoke so glibly? You did say at the stroke of two, didn't you, Jacob? <laughs> uh, mistaken in death, <clears throat> as you were in life, old partner. Ebenezer Scrooge! Ebenezer Scrooge! <laughs> You've never seen the likes of me before, eh? It's quite true, I have not. You never walked forth with any of the younger members of my family? No, not that I remember. Nor any of my elder brothers born these later years? No, I'm afraid not, no. Do you have many? Brothers, will you? <laughs> Over 1,800! <laughs> Tremendous family to provide for. Take hold of my robe, Ebenezer Scrooge. You know? Christmas morning. show you to what good use these wares can be put. Is there some peculiar power which emanates from your torch? Oh, yes. There is. Do you know this house? Well, I can't say I do. It is the house of Bob Cratchit. Is he? Well, he does very well on 15 bob a week. Shall we go in? I wouldn't want to disturb you. As with Christmas past, we shall be invisible and unheard. I wonder what's keeping your father. He's probably stopped to talk to the parson. Father always likes to compliment him on his sermons. I do hope the pudding's a success this year. No one makes a better pudding than you, Mother. Peter, save some for the rest of the family. Just testing the cooking, Mother. I'm sure they'll manage very well in the room without your help, young man. Hello, Mother. Hello, Mother. Smell the goose cooking, Martha. Yes, it makes my mouth water. Mine, too. I can't wait. Well, you'll just have to. Now run along with Martha and help her butter the bread thinly. Here they are. Merry Christmas, oh, everyone. You're late, Bob Cratchit. Oh, and you're quite like an icicle tin. You've been dawdling. Father had a long talk with the minister. Thought as much. Come, Tim, listen to the pudding hissing on the fire. It's like a giant snake inside the copper. Go along with your brother and sister, Tim. I'll begin the wine. Off you go, then. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 
How did you behave in church? As good as gold. Better. I was very worried if it'll turn out all right. Look how they support him. What did you say? Nothing. It's, um... Nothing. Somehow he gets thought for sitting by himself so much. He thinks the strangest things. He told me coming home that he hoped that the people in church saw him because he was a cripple and that it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas Day who it was that made lame beggars walk and blind men see. It seems to me that Tim is getting stronger every day, that his limbs are growing, that he's in better spirits, it seems to me. Yes, Bob. I'm sure you're right. He is getting stronger. Well, we're all here. That's the important thing. Belinda, help me with the goose. Yes, Mother. Peter, I have some good news for you. I met by chance this morning at church a fine gentleman, Fred Hollywell by name. He's a nephew of our own Mr. Scrooge. And he remembered that I have a sudden coming of working age, and he told me that he had a position open starting at three shillings and sixpence every week. Three shillings and sixpence every week? So, if you are agreeable, you may start work on Monday next. Now I can begin to help you and Mother. More important, you shall be embarking on a fine career. To start a boy at three and sixpence a week. Hey, it's typical of my nephew. There's no wonder he's never been able to put by a penny. Perhaps he's put by more than money. Fred? <laughs> he's doing this to spite me, you know? Employing the son of my employee at an exorbitant wage. Haven't we forgotten something? Lord, we thank you for the bounty you have placed before us. We thank you for this day of love and joy. We thank you for allowing us to be together, to share with each other and with you the fullness of our hearts on this special day. Amen. 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 What? You say something? Oh, well, I, th I thought I heard you. Yeah, I said nothing. Oh. Uh, Potato. Alice. Potato. And, uh... Potato, Alice. It's a very small goose. It's all Bob Cratchit can afford. Me. Are we all served? Yes, yes, yes. Then let's begin. And a Merry Christmas to us all. A Merry Christmas to us all. And God bless us, everyone. Tell me, Spirit, will he live? I see a vacant place at this table. I see a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. No. No, say he will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none other of my species will find him here. But if he is to die, then let him die and decrease the surplus population. You use my own words against me. So perhaps in the future you will hold your tongue until you have discovered what the surplus population is and where it is. It may well be that in the sight of heaven you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child.
triumph, my dear. <laughs> Another triumph? <laughs> I told you so, Mother. Well, it's a success. What a relief for Mrs. Cratchit. Now their feast is over. And not quite. Just one more ceremonious moment. Look. Now I would like to propose a toast to Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge, the founder of our feast. Mr. Scrooge. Founder of our feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon and hope he had a good appetite for it. My dear, the children, it's Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, when one would drink the health of such a, a stingy, odious, mean, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. My dear, have some charity. Oh, well. I'll drink his health for your sake and the day's sake, but not for his. Long life, Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I've no doubt his Christmas will be very merry and he'll be very happy. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mm. He's made a point, Bob Cratchit has. Without me, there would be no feast, no goose at all. My head for business has furnished him employment. Is that all you've learned by observing this family on Christmas Day? Well, no, not all, but... One must speak up for oneself, for one's life. <laughs> oh, here it is. Here we come, a wassailing among the leaves so green. Here we come, a wandering so fair to be seen. Love and joy come to you, and a merry Christmas too. And God bless you and send you a happy new year. We have some time left. Take my robe. Love and joy come to you, and a merry Christmas too. And God bless you and send you a happy new year. Oh, honey and me, I eat when we go. Where are we now? Just a street. Any street. This house. We'll go in here. Think it might amuse you. I'm in no mood to be amused. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dear husband, do you find my playing so amusing? Oh, I'm sorry, my love. I was thinking of his face yesterday. Humbug, he said. Humbug. He said that Christmas was a humbug. He believed it, too. <laughs> I'd very much like to meet your uncle, sir. The droll way in which you portray him tickles my heart. He's a comical fellow. <laughs> but not so pleasant as he might be. His offences carry their own punishment. Dear brother-in-law, it's said he's very rich. Yes, well, that is very true. But his wealth is of no use to him. He doesn't do any good with it. He doesn't even make himself comfortable with it. Well, he must squander it. That's what you mean by comfortable. You mustn't argue with those we visit. It's useless and even tactless. Tact is quality I despise. That I can see. I have no patience with him. Well, I have, and I feel sorry for him. So <coughs> sorry for me? <laughs> Who suffers from his ill whims? Himself, always. Here, he takes it in his heart to dislike us and uh, not come and dine with us. And he loses a very good dinner indeed. The reason that I talk about my uncle, sir, is that my mother, God rest her saintly soul, was very fond of him. She loved him. It's true. Fan loved me and I her. Dear Fan, I wonder if she were alive today. Fred looks very like her. Yes, I've been reminded of that just recently. I was only going to say that the consequences of his taking a dislike to us and not making merry with us 
is that he loses some pleasant moments, which could do him no harm. And I mean to give him the same chance every year, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> and every year he'll say, Christmas. Bah! 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 <laughs> Come, my dear, we must see to our guests. Hello. 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 Would you like some look? Poison. Can't you help myself think? Well, they seem to be happy. Well, I suppose that free food and drink would be an occasion for pleasure to most people. Happy in each other's company, I mean. Yes. Everyone, hush there. We shall have a game, a word oh, game. Yes, a <laughs> game. What should it be? Oh, Does everyone know the rules to simulate? All right, everyone. Now, you shall each have five seconds to answer. I'll ask the question. Mr. Topper, you'll keep count. Oh, well, I shall do my best. <laughs> now, now, you'll each have five seconds to answer. If you fail to give an acceptable answer within that time, then you must each stand behind your chair. <laughs> Last one to, uh, who's seated uh, wins the prize. Fred, Fred, don't go on so. Just begin. Oh, I'm sorry, my love. Yes, yes I shall. <laughs> yes, I shall. And <laughs> um, now, um, proud as. Proud as a peacock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. So, dry as. As a bone. Oh! Plump out. My wife. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, my lad. Just a little joke. Uh, plump as... One. Two, two seconds. A partridge. <laughs> oh. Quick as... Oh, oh. Wind. No. <laughs> One, two, 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 three, four, five. Oh, a wink, you idiot. Ebenezer, shh. Who said they could neither see nor hear us? That's quite true. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. <laughs> Even I forget the regulations sometime. After all, I, I do not come back very often. Shh, I'm trying to listen to the game. Modest as? A maiden. No. Well, I'm sure it's a well-known simile. Well, I was thinking of modest as a violet. <laughs> right. <laughs> However, I will accept your answer. Janet, attend. Tight as. Tight as. A drum. Anyone knows that. Tight as. <sighs> Not very bright, my nephew's wife. Tight as your Uncle Scrooge's purse strings. Janet, <laughs> 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 that's quite wrong. And your time is up. You've lost and you must stand behind your chair. Tight as a drum. That's what I was thinking of. Good for you, Fred. The boy's got a head on his shoulders. And as for the laughter at my expense, Spirit, I'm inclined to overlook it in view of the general gaiety of the evening. It is now time to leave this pleasant scene. We have one more visit to make before my time is done. Take hold of my robe. Sly as a fox. Yes. <laughs> Red as. Red as a rose. Yes. <laughs> Silent as the night. No. Uh, I'm out. Not at all. <laughs> no, I know. The grave. Where are we now? I'm sure I don't know this place. The name would mean nothing to you. It's a place, like many in this world. Do we have enough wood for the night? Ah, oh, it'll last through. At least there's one thing still free in this country. Mary, a piece of egg cooked. They're too hot. It'll be cold soon enough. Where did you get these, Father? I didn't steal them, if that's what you're saying. She didn't say you stole them, Ben. She should have some respect. Don't berate the girl. They fell from a cart into the road. Your father's not a thief, girl. Not yet. Why are these people out here? Men and women in rags, children eating scraps. They're institutions. Have you visited any of them, these institutions you speak of? No, I'm taxed for them. Isn't that enough? Is it? Ben, come back to the fire. Look at these hands, Meg. They're hard hands. They've done hard work. I want to work. I want to have bread for my children. It's not right that there's no work. We're together, Ben. That's the important thing. I love you, Meg. 
I love the children. Tomorrow, take the children and go to the parish poorhouse. No. No. I'd rather we all drowned in the river than go to one of those places and be separated forever. Until I get work. No. Ben, we're a family. We stay together. Come. Come back to the fire. Come. How do you show me this? What has it to do with me? Are they not of the human race? Look here! Beneath my robe! Look upon these! What are they? They are your children! They are the children of all who walk the earth unseen. Their names are ignorance and want. Beware of them. For upon their brow is written the word doom. They spell the downfall of you and all who deny their existence. Having no refuge, no resource. Are there no workhouses? Are there no prisons? Cover them. I do not wish to see them. I thought as much. They are hidden. But they live. Oh, they live. Time has come for me to leave you, Ebenezer Scrooge. Leave? Leave me here? Oh, yes. Well, you cannot have take me back to my bed. <laughs> it's too late. It's cold. The place is strange. Don't leave me. <laughs> Spirit. Come back. I wish to talk. Perhaps I... I have made a mistake here and there. Talk too quickly about matters to which I gave no great thought. Very well, we, we, we'll have a give and take. Come to some meeting of the minds. I, I, I'm a reasonable man. Spirit! Have pity on me. Don't leave me. What have I done to be abandoned like this? Visit me. And I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come, am I not? You're about to show me the shadows of the things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Is that so? I am prepared. 
prepared to bear your company. Will you not speak to me? Very well. Lead on. The night is waning fast. Time is precious to me. Place. I, I know it very well. Uh, the exchange, it's like a second home to me. No, <laughs> oh, I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Well, last night, I believe. What happened to his money? Left it to his company, perhaps. Who else did he have? <laughs> <laughs> It'll likely be a very small funeral, supposing we volunteered and form a party. I'll go if lunch is provided, but I insist on being fed for the time I'll waste. <laughs> have these men no respect for the dead? I should go, I suppose. After all, we did considerable business together. Well, I must go and find the price of corn. Goodbye. 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 How was I privy to that conversation? What purpose could it have for me? Fearful place. I, I wish to leave it. No, I will not. This you cannot make me do. I say I understand you. That is sufficient to the moment. Furthermore, there must be someone in this city who feels some emotion because of this man's death. I demand to see that person. <laughs> this is a most foul part of town. We must have made a mistake, taken a wrong turn. to transact in there. Well, open it up. This is Dilber. I might pay you for goods I haven't seen. You'll not ask me how I came by these. Every person has a right to take care of himself. That's my motto. Sorry, you always did. <laughs> and who's the worst for the loss of a few things? Mm. Not a dead man, I suppose. No, indeed. I mean, if he'd wanted to keep him after he was dead, the wicked old screw, why wasn't he more natural in his lifetime? Mm. If he had been, he'd have had someone to look after him when he was struck with death. Uh. Instead of lying there, gasping out his last, mm. alone, yeah. by himself. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Those are my things. She's stolen my things. I'll, I'll have her before a magistrate. What do you call these? Bed curtains. You don't mean to say you took them down. Rings and all with him lying there. Why not? <laughs> 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 
Mm. And don't get wax on his blankets. His blankets? I hope he didn't have anything catching. <laughs> eh? I wasn't so fond of him as I'd loiter about if he did. <laughs> 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 well, what's your offer then? Yeah, four, six, five, three, six, two, four, seven, Those are not my things. Yes, they are similar, but the person she speaks of, that, that could not be me. A similarity, perhaps. <laughs> One pound, five and three. Not a penny more if I was to be boiled for it. You're hardened, Joe, and no mistake. I'm always kind to the ladies. That's the way I ruin myself. <laughs> Spirit, what perversity is this? I asked to see some emotion in connection with this man's death. You show me only greed and avarice. Let me see some tenderness, some depth of feeling. There must be some confusion, you. Your fellow spirit brought me here earlier. Very well. You're devilish hard to have a conversation with. Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. This colour hurts my eyes. It's better now. This work makes my eyes red. And I wouldn't show red eyes to your father when he comes home. Not for the world. It must be nearly his time. Past it, rather. I think he walks slower than he used to these last few evenings, Mother. Yet I've seen him walk home with... with Tiny Tim on his shoulders very fast indeed. And so have I. And so have I. And so have I. But he was very light to carry. And your father loved him so that... there was no trouble. No trouble. There is your father now. Hello, my dear. Hello, my dear ones. Hello, Hello Father. Father. You're late. We were worried about you. I'm glad you're home, Father. I am, too. Oh, you've become quite a little harmful. The reason that I'm late is because I walked by there today. Today? I couldn't keep away. It's so quiet and green. You shall see it on Sunday. We shall all go on Sunday. I promised him that every Sunday I walk. My little child. My little, little child. Father, please don't grieve so. No, oh, I'm sorry. I have all of you. A blessing to be thankful for. Do you know who I saw in the street today? Mr. Scrooge's nephew, Fred. And he greeted me in his usual cheerful way. And uh, he saw that I was a little sad. He asked me what was distressing me. And when I told him, he said that he was heartily sorry for me. And, uh... Brothers. 
Timmy's part of all of us. And for his sake, we must go on living. So long as we love one another, he will always be alive. Yes, of course, my dear. But however and whenever we are parted from one another, I'm sure that none of us will ever forget poor tiny Tim. No, no, never, never, never. never. And when we recollect how patient he was and how mild, although he was but a little, little child, I'm sure that we will not easily quarrel among ourselves. I am a happy man. I am a truly happy man. I asked for tenderness and depth of feeling. And you've shown me that. Nothing more I need see. Take me home. What is this? I thought we had agreed that you would transport me home. Something informs me that the moment of our parting is at hand. I know it, but I know not how. Tell me, what man was that whom we saw lying dead? No. No, before I draw near to that stone, answer me this. Are the things you have shown me the shadows of the things that will be? Are they the shadows of the things that may be only? Horses will foreshadow certain ends. I, I accept that. But if those courses be departed from, the ends must change. Tell me that is so by what you show me. not the man I was. I will not be the man I must have been but for this visitation. Why show me this if I am past all hope? Good spirit, your nature intercedes for me and pities me. Say that I may change these things by an altered life. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. Tell me. <laughs> Tell me that I may sponge away the writing on this stone. Oh, spare me. <laughs> spare me. <laughs> My own room. I'm alive. Oh, thank you, Spirit. I will keep my promise. I will live in the past, present, and the future. The spirits of all three will strive within me. Oh, heaven and Christmas time be praised for this. I say this on my knees, Jacob Marley. On my knees.
nine o'clock. And daylight. But what day? Hello, you there, boy. Me, sir? Yes, you, my good fellow. What day is today? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day, of course. Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. The spirits did it all in one night. Well, they can do anything they like. Of course they can. Um, hello, my fine fellow. Hello. Do you know the poulterers in the next street but one uh, on the corner? I should hope I did. Intelligent boy, remarkable boy. Um, do you know if they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging there? What? The one as big as me? <laughs> Delightful boy. <laughs> Pleasure talking to you. Yes, the one as big as you. It's hanging there now. Well, go and buy it. Yes, go and buy it and bring them round so that I may tell them where to deliver it. Come back with the man, I'll give you a shilling. Come back in less than five minutes, I'll give you half a crown. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. I must stress myself. So much to do. I don't want to lose any time. What? I, I, I was light. <laughs> I'm as happy as an angel. <laughs> I'm as merry as a school one. I'm as giddy as a drunken man. <laughs> merry Christmas to everybody. And a happy new year to the world. <laughs> If this be a prank, boy, I'll box your ears. He was in that window. I swear it. Ah, uh, there you are. This boy here says you wish to purchase this turkey here. He is quite right. Here's your half crown for a service well rendered. Thank you, sir. Splendid, boy. Now, there is an address and the price of the turkey. You'll take this fine bird to Bob Cratchit in Camden down. The directions are all written down. You leave immediately this very moment. Yes, sir. You'll say only that it comes from a friend. And it must be there in time for Christmas dinner. It will be, sir. Good fellow. Here's a little something for your trouble. Oh, thank you, sir. Ah, yeah. Not at all. Off of you. Hmm? Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas. Wonderful day. Good morning. Merry Christmas to you. Like angels. Yes, exactly. You sing excellently well, yes. Thank you. It is I who thank you for that glorious music on this glorious Christmas day. <laughs> good morning, gentlemen. Oh, gentlemen, oh, good morning. Gentlemen. Merry Christmas to you. Mr. Scrooge. Yeah, that is my name. I fear it is not pleasant to you. Uh, allow me to beg your pardons, and please accept my pledge to the poor and needy for... Uh... Lord bless me. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you quite uh, serious? If you please, and not a farthing less. There are a great many back payments uh, included in that, I assure you. What can I say to such generosity? Don't, don't say anything. But dear sir, <laughs> will you come and see me? We will. Oh, we will indeed. Thank you, I'm very much obliged. Thank you. Fifty times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The orphan children's making right. Yes. Bob Cratchit. Yes. This is for you. Well, there must be some mistake. You are Bob Cratchit. Yes. Well, there ain't no mistake. I didn't order this. This here prize turkey was bought and paid for by a gentleman to be delivered to Bob Cratchit and family in time for Christmas dinner. What gentleman? What's his name? Anonymous. He wishes to remain anonymous. Anonymous, you said? That's what he said, an anonymous gentleman. Well, who could have sent it? I have no idea. Perhaps it's a mistake. That's what I thought. It's got our name and address on it, though. What should we do, then? I say we cook it and eat it and have the best Christmas feast we've ever had in our lives. And I say, Mrs. Cratchit, what a splendid idea. <laughs> and God bless us all, everyone. And God bless us all, everyone. Merry Christmas, sir. 
Thank you. Oh, Fred. Oh, it's much too expensive. But do you like it? Oh, I love it. Oh, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Well, then, it belongs upon your wrist, my darling. Merry Christmas. Oh, Fred, <laughs> I do love you. Oh, and not just for this. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, who can that be? Well, no one's expected this out. My God, it's Uncle Ebenezer. Your uncle? What in the world would he want? Open the door, Mary. I'm sure I don't know. Fred. Uncle Ebenezer. May I come in? Yes, come in. Uh, please. Thank you. Do come in. Good afternoon, madam. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, Uncle Ebenezer, this is my wife, Janet. Janet, this is Uncle Ebenezer. Uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> More like a surprise, wouldn't you say? Well, that too. <laughs> Well, that's quite true. Uh, quite honestly, it is a surprise. When we spoke yesterday, you made it quite clear, it seemed to me, at least, that you had no intention of accepting my annual invitation. I made other things clear, too, didn't I, Fred? That Christmas was a humbug, a waste of time and money. A false and commercial festival, devoutly to be ignored. Yes, basically that was it. Mm. Well, I've come for three reasons. First, to beg your pardon for the things I said about Christmas. That was a humbug, friend. Was it? Mm -hmm. I didn't know it then, but I know it now. Secondly, I've come to meet your wife. Well, here she is. Yes. And a very beautiful woman she is, too. Thank you. I, uh... I was in love once. Would you believe that? Yes. That I possess neither the courage nor the optimism, perhaps the depth of feeling that you two have. Thirdly, if the invitation to dine with you today is still in force, I accept. Of course it's still in force. <laughs> Hurrah! <laughs> I was sure that one day. You were sure, were you? Well, apparently you were right. <laughs> yes, I should like to dine with you and your friends. You'll be more than welcome. You like games, don't you? Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh -huh. Do you ever play uh, similes? <laughs> it's one of our favorites. Well, perhaps we could play today. Quite possibly. <laughs> I'm very good at it. And should the phrase uh, tight ends be thrown out, the answer is uh, a drum. Why, yes, so it is. <laughs> good. <laughs> Forgive me for saying this, but I see the shadow of my sister in your face. I loved your mother, Fred. For a time there, I forgot just how much I loved her. Perhaps I chose to forget. Well, now, it isn't too much trouble. I should like to sample some of that punch for your affairs. Of course. You've made us both very happy, Uncle Ebenezer. Have I? Yes. God forgive me for the time I've wasted.
Mr. Cratchit. Here, sir. Do you know what time it is? Yes, sir. What time is it? Eighteen minutes past the hour, sir. Eighteen and a half minutes past the hour. What do you mean, coming here this time of day? I'm sorry, sir. But I am behind my time. <laughs> yes, I think you are. Step this way, sir, if you will, please. It's only once a year, sir. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, my friend, I'm not going to stand for this any longer. Therefore, therefore, I am going to double your salary. Double my salary, sir? Yes, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> <laughs> a Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> I'll double your salary for a start, and I'll endeavor to assist your family in any way I can. And Tim, Tim will walk again and grow stronger and stronger upon my life. He will. <laughs> well, we'll discuss the particulars this afternoon over a Christmas bowl. Hmm. Well, what's the matter with you? Nothing, sir. It's just that... Nothing. Thank you, sir. Well, my good fellow. Make up the fire before we freeze to death. <laughs> Buy some more coal. Before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Yes, sir. Ebenezer Scrooge was better than his word. He became as good a friend, as good a master, as good a man as the old city knew. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. It was said of Ebenezer Scrooge that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us. Everyone.